He is coming to the Broome County Forum Theater tonight here in Binghamton to entertain us. It's comedian Lewis Black on the whale line. Good morning. How you doing? I'm good. Looking forward to the show tonight at the Broome County Forum. The weather's been kind of nice here on the East Coast. Well, actually, you're from the East Coast, right? I live in the city. I was originally from Maryland. So you're used to the uh, East Coast weather. Yeah, this is like real weather as opposed to, you know, <laughs> what goes on out in other parts of the country. <laughs> this is true. Have you been to Binghamton before? I can't remember if you have or not. Yeah, I have. I've been through there a few times. That's what and, I thought. Uh, I, I've, uh, even, and even on my own, I went there. Even before, without performing, I've been there. So so you know what a speedy is? Vaguely. <laughs> People look at you kind of strange when you mention it, but it's kind of like <laughs> our thing from here. It's funny, I was looking up your bio and different things about you. They have you listed as a comedian, author, playwright, social critic, and actor. Yeah. All in one. You, you know, you get to a certain age, you pretty much, you know, I, I did a, you know, if one thing didn't work out, you went to the next thing. Well, you didn't actually start out as a comedian. You started out in the theater, correct? I wrote plays, wrote yeah, plays? which is uh, a really fast way to, if you really want to find out where the, the bottom of the economy is outside of maybe uh, uh, that of a crack war. <laughs> um, it's playwriting. I can imagine it's a pretty interesting profession. And how do you get from playwriting into comedy? Well, I was I, w- I was doing stand-up as kind of a, a hobby, and it was a way to write stuff, and I could get it on. Because you write a play, and you can wait years <laughs> for somebody to do it. So this way, I, I could write something and see how it worked. And at least, you know, and I was, I was always kind of fascinated by it. I didn't really think I'd end up doing it. Was this something that was uh, lucrative right from the start, or did it take you a while to get going? It was a big jump from from, from making nothing to actually an income. Because mm-hmm. I, I did it when I was 40, and when I really started going around the country, I had kind of, it didn't take long for me to become a headliner. You know, being on the road and, and doing stand-up, you travel and you play a lot of different venues. So, Lewis, do you prefer venues like arenas, college campuses, or club settings? What do you prefer? I prefer, the, like, the, a theater that's like, uh, you know, 1,500 seats, mm-hmm. you know, around that size. You know, it gets to be, there's one arena in um, the, uh, of all places, Mohegan Sun, where they have gigantic video monitors, and it, it kind of works, but mm-hmm. most of those, I mean, I'm not, nobody's big enough. I mean, I don't, you know, uh, however good the comic is, I mean, they're still watching you on television when you're in a big arena. Hey, Lewis, let's talk about the tour that you're doing right now, the Emperor's New Clothes, the Naked Truth Tour, and not to give up any material that you're doing, but the issues that you focus on, of course, you're known for your rants and different things. Is it more of a slice of life or more political, or do you kind of mix it up a little bit? Well, I always do, but half of the thing is is, is generally slice of life, and the other half is, you know, politics. But the, I try to keep the politics about how it affects people as opposed to the personalities. But in, in this case... At this point in time, the fact that uh, they ran 16 people like they couldn't figure this out early, you know, they couldn't figure out that uh, you didn't have to look at Rick Perry again. Well, I don't care if he's wearing glasses. OK, can we move on? <laughs> you say the emperor's new clothes. It's it's an interesting statement because what comes to mind to me is people are all jumping on like a bandwagon or a type of concept, you know, because everybody else is doing it. Yeah. Well, it's that whole thing of, you know. These people are walking around. It's that. It's the. I, I just find it amazing that a kid's fairy tale still holds up. <laughs> you know, the guy's not wearing clothes. They're not wearing clothes. I mean, really. And it's the, you know, the only thing that Trump has shown, outside of the fact that he really has possibly the largest ego ever manifested on the planet, the, the only thing that he's really shown is that you know that uh, he, you know, his you know people kind of gravitate toward him because he's you know he's at, he's talking. Yeah. <laughs> like a human being. And a lot of these, a lot of leaders, you know, from the time they're in high school, they're trained to be leaders and they come up with a leader voice and the leader voice doesn't work a lot of the times. You know, the other thing is, is we spent so long watching these people by the time that they're really talking to us as leaders, we're sick of listening to them. That's interesting. So let me ask you, Lewis, what is your stance on the Trump bandwagon? You know, I think it's unbelievable. I think the last thing was really, it seems like it doesn't matter what he says. Yeah. He could say, you know, I'd like you each to eat your firstborn uh, <laughs> during the Christmas season, and he'd, he'd get a, he'd get a j- jump in the polls. <laughs> All right, so the Naked Truth Tour, how long has this been going on? Give us a little background on this. Well, this just this is just really starting up. You know, my I really my tour, the uh, Rant is Due Tour is ending, and the, and the Naked Truth Tour is kind of starting. So we're right at the beginning of it. 
So folks that uh, follow you around will see a little new material, maybe get to see some of the other stuff you've done? Well, yeah. No, people who follow me around will see a lot of new material. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, at the end of the show, I do a thing now. We do a a Q&A with the audience, and they can um, type in questions or things that are bothering them and send them to us at the theater. And then on the web, they do it, too. And then the last 20 minutes to a half hour of the show, uh, I do like an hour show. And then the last 20 minutes to a half an hour, I read rants from people. People and uh, I read, uh, I answer questions from people, and it all goes out over the internet. Even if you don't come to see the show, if you went to therantisdude.com, you could uh, watch the last 25 minutes of the show for free. And how far do you go with the tour? You, you go and uh, you stand basically in the states. Yeah, this yeah. this go around. I talk about this uh, in the act now, but the, not this past summer. The summer before, I uh, toured Europe. So this time, I'm just I'll be in the states until probably uh, late April or March. I'm, I'll be in Canada for some of the time. Looking forward to the show tonight at the Broome County Forum with Lewis Black. And Lewis, I know you got a lot of different projects going on. You've been in movies. You're doing things on the internet. So before we let you go, tell us about some of the things going on. You know, if you haven't seen Inside Out, it's a really great animation that I did with the folks at, at Pixar. And also, you can go to a, there's a thing called, uh, on my website, you can find a thing called The Mentors, which are six short pieces about uh, being badly mentored in the entertainment business, but with some really fine actors and stuff that I help produce and I'm in a, uh, I'm in one and I've written some of them. And that's lewisblack.com? That's lewisblack.com. Comedian Lewis Black, Broom County Forum tonight's show begins at 8. Lewis, thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. Well, I really appreciate your time and I look forward to coming to Binghamton. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you. All right, bye now, Lewis. Bye-bye.